Hi, my name is Drew Wallace, and I want to talk to you about my Grand Banks 32, named Woody's Dream, named after my Uncle Woody that we used to go fishing many years ago in an old wooden boat down in the Chesapeake Bay. The reason I bought this boat is I wanted to continue my life on the water. And more specifically, I also wanted to go down the Intracoastal Waterway and spend a couple winters down there with my daughter who lives in Charleston. So I was looking for a boat that I could go down there in an affordable manner and feel safe and have a seaworthy boat. And the Grand Banks was really the only choice for that. The reason I know the Grand Banks is a good wooden boat is because I've had several experiences to help me understand that. I've been up to Brooklyn, Maine to the Wooden Boat School and spent two weeks building three different boats. We had three different boat hauls and worked on each one separately. Then I came back and actually built the 19-foot wooden dory. Additionally, I've had experience uh, with the Coast Guard earning my captain's license, which made me appreciate the need for safety and good navigational abilities of a boat. The 19-foot dory wooden boat that I built was actually made from a kit by the Chesapeake Lightcraft people. I went to a class in Annapolis where we had the planks laid out in front of us and we actually assembled and put together this boat through a process called glue and stitch. Very interesting. And then we finished by coating the boat, the bottom, with fiberglass, and then the entire boat with several coats of epoxy, and then many, many coats of varnish on top of that. The boat is a beautiful boat, and it really gave me an appreciation of what goes into building a wooden boat. I'd like to spend a minute talking about the instrumentation and how this boat operates. The most important thing is your helm and this with the little rings around it is your king's boat and this when it's up like this it means you're going to go straight. Your rudder is in a straight position. Uh, this way you're going to go to starboard. This way you're going to go to port. Uh, if you look at the dashboard we have a couple of alarms. Uh, the top one is your bilge pump when it goes off, then there's another alarm if the water's up higher and your emergency pump's going off. We also have the water temperature gauges, the fuel gauges, your alternator, and then we have oil pressure, your voltmeter, the generator hours, the engine hours, and your tachometer. Also over here to your right is your autopilot, which if you're going to single hand this boat, that autopilot is essential. And I should say that most of these uh, instruments are also on the upper helm, not all, but most are, the essential ones are as well. And here you have your controls, you have your uh, throttle, and you have your gear shift. Of course you have your ignition, and these would be your windshield wipers, which if you're running in uh, rain or rough water, become pretty critical as well. We also have your Ritchie compass which nowadays becomes less important because you have your uh, Ray Marine plot, <coughs> plot chart plotter which tells you the direction you're going, your speed, your depth, um, and it gives you a good visual of where you are. Um, it has the ability to put your waypoints on to chart but to be honest I find uh, the little uh, um, Navionics app almost better than charting here. It's a little bit easier. Although I tend to use this to get a better fix, overall fix of where I am in the water. Not only that, but this also has radar, which is useful uh, if it's foggy or so forth. And of course, as required, you have to have your VHF uh, radio, which is very helpful not only to monitor ch uh, channel 16, but also marine weather and so forth. Uh, these are just storage bins underneath which you can keep binoculars and so forth. Uh, this is also just for various storage. I have some oil in there, but you can put bottles of water or whatever you would like in there as well. 
and on your side panel here is most of the uh, stuff related to the generator. It's an Onan generator. This is where you would start it. And also this would be the control of your batteries and bilge pumps. Let me talk a minute about the upgrades because a lot of this equipment that I briefly mentioned was not part of the original Grand Banks 32 1970 version. Specifically, if you look up here, you see the bow thruster, which again, if you're single-handling the boat, handling the boat, this becomes pretty key. It's just a little prop up in the bow that can move that bow one way or the other. This is a series of breakers which controls virtually everything in the boat from your fire extinguisher to your electronics to your refrigerator and radio and so forth. And then going back down to this panel, again this is, this is all custom made for the boat and this is where we do control your generator and your bilge pumps as well as what battery or all that we're working on. The nice thing about what you're looking at here, these are not the original instrumentation and electrical system. This has all been redone more recently, which gives me a more comfortable feeling about the reliability of the electrical system of the boat. Okay, if you look over on the port side of the boat, you'll see there's some nice upgrades which make this boat really livable when you're doing a trip like the ICW. We have a Dominic uh, refrigerator, which works really well, and it also has a freezer up at the top. There's also a sharp microwave, which is very nice. And of course, I also have a, a one burner stove. But between the microwave and the stove, you can actually cook a pretty good meal. Of course, you have your traditional sink with hot water and cold water. Hot water heater works great. There's a pantry above which holds canned goods and whatever you want in there. And then also a little rack here to hold cups or glasses or whatever you like. Plenty of shelf right here to prepare your food or storage. Okay, down below here you'll see we have a, a whole series of custom items. One is the air conditioner, a cruise air. Also we have a 110 panel. It covers the refrigerator, the cabin outlets, the microwave, battery charger, heater, which is really nice. It's underneath here. Um, engine room outlets, also the hot water heater. In this cabin, we do have relatively new headliners. We have fresh paint. We have new lighting. And um, the V-berth is comfortable. You can make it more comfortable by pulling this out and putting that across. So as far as the V-berth, since I had to spend two winters down here, I actually redid all the fabric on these V-berths, along with the new foam as well. All is brand new foam. This ElectroScan system is state-of-the-art wastewater sewage treatment system. Very, very nice system. And also here we have a tank watch, which watches the level in your holding tank. Again, state-of-the-art equipment, not standard on most of your GB32s.